In this lecture, we are going to create a middleware which is going to protect our protected routes from unauthorized access. The protected routes are those routes which should be accessible only to an authenticated user. The non-authenticated user, the non-logged in user should not be able to access a protected route. So in our application, we already have a login API in place. So from the client, whenever a user will make a request for login, the request will go to the login API and the login API is going to return us a response. And in that response, we are going to have a token. Now, once the user is logged in, when he will try to access a protected route, the request will be sent to the protected route. And with the request, we are also going to send that token, which we received in the response when we logged in. Okay. And if this token is valid, then the protected API will return the response. But if the token is not valid, then the request should not reach the protected route. And to make sure that the request coming from an unauthenticated user does not reach the protected API, we are going to create an authorization middleware. In this authorization middleware, we are going to write the logic to check whether the token which we have received with the request, whether that token is valid or not. If the token is valid, this auth middleware will forward the request to the protected API. But if the token is not valid from this auth middleware, we are going to return an error response. So in our express application, the login and sign up routes can be accessed by anyone. That means any user can see the login page and sign up page and try to log in or sign up. But apart from that, any other route which we are going to create in our express application that can be accessed only by authorized users that should not be accessible to unauthorized users. And to make sure that this happens, we are going to create this auth middleware. So let's go to VS code. And here we have this auth controller file. And in this auth controller file, we have the sign up and login route. So these two APIs, these two routes should be accessible to any user. But any other route which we are going to create in this application that can be accessed only by an authenticated user. Okay, so let me go ahead and let me close this authcontroller.js file. Let's close this config.env file also. Let's keep this app.js open. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder here and I'll call it as middlewares. And inside this middlewares folder, we are going to keep all our middlewares. So for now, we are going to create one middleware and I'm going to call it as auth middleware. You can name this file anything. And it is going to be a JavaScript file. Now, a middleware is nothing but a function. Every request passed through a middleware and that middleware performs some action on the request. It modifies or manipulates the request and then it sends it to the next middleware or to the respective route. Okay, and every middleware function is going to receive the request object, the response object, and it also receives this next callback function. Now, in order to make sure that this auth middleware function is accessible from other files also, we are going to export this function from here. So for that, I'm going to use module.exports. And to that, we are going to assign this function. Basically, from this file, we are exporting this middleware function. All right, let me save this file. And now inside this function, let me first go ahead and let me add a try catch block. From the catch block, let's send a response. So for that, let's say response.send. And from here, we are going to send an object. In that object, we are going to have a message property. And in the message, we are going to send the error message. And let's set the success property to false. Okay, so if any error occurs, in that case, we are sending an error response. Now, in the try block, let's go ahead and let's write the logic of validating the JSON web token, the authentication token, which we are going to receive with the request. And to validate the token, first of all, we are going to import the JSON web token package here. So let's create a variable, let's call it JWT and let's require JSON web token package. 
Now, when we are going to make a request to a protected route, let me go to the postman. There, what we are going to do is, we are going to pass this authentication token, this JSON web token with the request. And how are we going to pass this JSON web token with the request? Let me copy this token. And let me also save this request here. So I'll click on the save button. And here I'm going to call it as user login. Okay, and let's click on the save button. Let's open a new tab here. And let's say from here we are making a get request. And with that request, we want to send the JSON web token. For that, we need to go to this authorization section. From there, we are going to select this bearer token. Basically, we are going to pass the JSON web token as the bearer token with the request header. So this JSON web token, which we are going to pass with the request, we are going to pass it with request header. And we are going to pass it as bearer token. So in here, we can specify that token here. Okay. So in the request header, the authorization header will be bearer space and this JSON web token. So in our code, what we are going to do is from that header, we are going to read that JSON web token. So here, let me go ahead and let me create a variable. Let's call it token. And to read the authorization header on the request object, we are going to have this headers object. And on the headers object, we are going to have authorization header. Okay. So this authorization header is going to contain bearer token. So the value will be bearer space JSON web token. So what we are going to do is we are going to split it using this split method. All right. And how do we want to split it? We want to split it with the space. So here this split method is going to create an array. In that array, the first element will be a string value called bearer. And the second element will be the authentication token. And we want to get that second element from that array. So for that, we are going to pass its index as one. And this is going to return us the authentication token. We have assigned it to this token variable. Now we are going to decode that token because here using this middleware, our intention is to verify whether that token is a valid token or not. And to verify whether a JSON web token is a valid token or not on JSON web token object, we have a method called verify to this verify method. First, we need to pass the token which we want to verify. And then we need to pass the secret key using which we have created that JSON web token. So in our config.in file, we have this secret key using this secret key and a data we created this json web token right so here to the verify method we also need to pass that secret key using which we created this json web token for that we are going to use this process dot object and on that we are going to access the secret key and this is going to verify this json web token using that secret key now we created this JSON web token using an object. So the object was something like this. There we had this user ID property, which we assigned with the ID property of the user object. So user dot underscore ID. So using this data and this secret key, we created this JSON web token. Now in order to decode this JSON web token, again, we are passing that secret key. So when this token will be decoded, it is going to return us this object. So let's go ahead and let's store it in a variable. And I'm going to call it as decoded token. Okay, so this verify method, it is going to do two things. First, it is going to verify whether that token is valid token or not. Now a token will be invalid if it has expired or if it contains invalid token value. If the token is valid, in that case, this verify method will decode that token and it is going to return us the decoded token. And the decoded token will contain the data using which we have created that token. And finally, if the token is valid, what we are going to do is on the request body, we are going to set a user ID property. Okay, 
so whichever request is going to come on that request we are going to add a user id property this user id property is not there we are adding that user id property here and we are going to assign that user id property with the user id which we have decoded from this token so this token when it will be decoded it is going to give us this object and in that object we have this user id property so we are going to assign the value of that user id property to the user id property of this request body so for that here i can say decoded token dot user id so now when this request will be passed to next middleware or to the route there on the request we will also have this user id property and you will understand why we are adding this user id property on the request body in this middleware in the coming lectures finally from here we are also going to call this next method because if we don't call this next method the next middleware will not get called and the request will stay forever in this same middleware from this middleware the request will not get forwarded to the next middleware or to the api so that's why we need to call this next method so that this request can be forwarded to the next middleware or to the route with this let's save the changes and in this way our auth middleware is complete now we are going to use this auth middleware on any other api which we are going to create in our coming lectures this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day